Good evening, folks. The minor proton storm this week will not go down in any record books. It didn't reach anywhere near scary levels, and I doubt anyone will even publish on the event. But I won't forget it for how unexpected it was. To understand why, we need to understand how these high-energy proton storms move in the solar system. They don't move in a straight line, away from the sun, but on a curve. These curves. The interplanetary magnetic field you see on the Enlil spiral. These gigantic solar fields thread the solar system, and when a big solar eruption hits one, the protons can get hyper-zoomed to near the speed of light. While a coronal mass ejection can take two or three days to arrive at Earth, these protons can arrive just minutes after a flare, surging through these flux tubes. Now, For that reason, sometimes a direct blast at Earth can send them here, but often they take the curve. One can arrive at Earth from the leading side or turning away from the Earth, even the exact opposite side of the Sun from the Earth. Now let's take a peek at what the coronal mass ejection trajectory looks like versus a proton storm. The shock wave of the dense CME goes straight out, but the particles follow the field curvature. Because of that, we have a danger zone for high energy proton storms and a safe zone. But like so many things in science, it just doesn't always work out that way. First, if we can take the Enlil spiral here and set it up the same on a separate graphic, sun on the left, little earth to the right, the red part of the circle is the danger zone. It extends from approximately earth-facing position to far onto the backside of the sun. The danger wanes as you approach the incoming limb, which is the bottom of the screen here, and when we look at the sun, that would be on the left side. Alas, what caused this proton storm this week? Big blasts from that exact location, several actually, all from the green zone. There were about three significant solar eruptions that worked the proton flux slowly upwards earlier this week. So now let's see that on our little graphic. We'll put a star where the blasts occurred. Now, true enough, this is not the first ever time this has happened, but it is unusual. And the only other times it did happen, the eruptions from the green zone were at least a hundred times bigger than the ones this week. To give you a comparison, this is like a pitcher throwing a perfect game, or if you could call out the prom queen when the kids are in kindergarten. The fact is that 99% of the time these storms originate from the danger zone, in red. But this one will stick in my head for not only the unusual genesis point in the green zone, but how the eruptions weren't so titanic that an explanation is readily available. I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.